Hi folks, this is David, aka Glaciers of Ice. Those of you who are friends of the Venture Compound recognize me. Uh, as I mentioned to a few of you, I'm looking to sell a piece of equipment here that's very near and dear to my heart. And so I thought I would do a quick demo, um, both before I let it go and so other people can um, get a little taste of it if you might be interested either in buying this one or another one because it is a great piece of equipment, um, the SP-808. Um, this is, uh, weirdly for me now, a classic, um, and um, even though it was kind of by accident that I bought it, um, one of the most famous uh, hip-hop artists who uses this or used this is MF Doom, um, and you'll be able to tell when I'm showing you some things um, the uh, MF Doom connection because the sound is pretty unique, and some people would say not necessarily in a good way. Um, this is not a uh, MPC where you have really, really fast reaction time from the pads. Um, the pads are mostly designed for looping, and so when you try and do hip-hop style cutting and chopping on it, uh, it can be a little bit laggy. Um, and you can hear that lag if you listen to MF Doom tracks, um, and maybe you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about as I do this. Um, this is a track that I put together from samples a long, long time ago, so you'll probably see me stumble a little bit as I walk through. Um, but uh, you'll get the idea. Um, turn the effects section off there. This is the effects section, um, the laser controller, which is fun to play with, and I'll show you in a second. Um, this, those are two trigger drums. Those are chopped out of a, a track. Um, and you can kind of tell there that they're not like super sharp. You couldn't do a rap music stuff on here. Um, this is a loop setup. It'll just keep going, but when I hit it again, it stops. And these again are like little accent marks. This is uh, some sort of Philadelphia soul. I forget exactly. With this, you can have four samples going at one time. That means that if I have a drum track going, I can actually then go in and play other drums over it. And as you can see, it's kind of tough to get the timing exactly right. Also have effects. Um, I don't remember what effect I have active right now, but we'll just hit it. Hmm. So I'll hit um, Shift Effects to see. Oh, wrong button. I have. Uh, it's been a long time since I've used this thing. So. Um, I actually don't know if I can remember how to get the effects um, window selection to come up. Hmm. Ah, okay, there we go. Apparently I have some kind of phaser selected. So that's a pretty fun part too. Not always the most functional, but pretty good. Um, and for people who are a little bit more tech savvy than I am and want to go back and figure out how to do it, there is also a step sequencer in here that you can use to run the internal analog modeling synthesizer and also to run through step sequences of effects. Um, and 
you program that in using, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video, um, but there is a setting in here for a four track recorder that runs through the digital storage. Um, so see there's a play button and I hit play and now we're playing a recorded version of this song. So maybe you'll get to hear just a little clip here of how it's supposed to sound. And I can skip through measures too, so. And that's a recording of me playing the pads. So you can record your pad performance into uh, the mixer. Um, and uh, that's about it. Um, again, I never uh, particularly used it, but there is a MIDI sync possibility here. Um, so you can sync it up to something else like the Select Tribe um, or uh, a more conventional drum machine. Um, it's a great little machine. I don't know if you can necessarily tell from the video, but the main selling point is that it has a really unique sound. The sample rate, the converter, um, have a certain like crunchy weirdness to them um, that makes everything a little bit cloudy. It's great for abstract music. And I'm going to do another video here in a minute focusing not on um, hip hop, but um, on how to do sort of noisy soundscapes with the SP-808. Um, I'm a big fan of it. I'm not using it much lately, which is why I'm getting rid of this one. Um, but I wanted to do a little bit of a tutorial for everybody who might be curious in this old but still really good piece of equipment. Thanks.